Skilling noted that he designed the towers to take a hit from a Boeing 707 traveling 600 miles an hour. When he was asked if he considered plane crashes, he cites, our analysis indicated the biggest problem would be the fact that all the fuel would dump into the building, but the building structure would still be there. This is FEMA's theory. We have the, the sagging of the trusses and the pulling away from the column, and then the subsequent pancaking down. Uh, again, the, the trusses one after the other, six foot eight inches, every truss disengaging from the perimeter wall, which what would, would have to be at the rate that these buildings fell, that would have been at the speed of sound, the disengagement from one truss to the next, all the way around the building, and then the next floor and the next floor and the next floor. So NIST turns it around and blames the persistence of these connections pulling in the columns, causing the c columns to buckle. Now, it's generally more difficult for, for people to understand that the towers were a controlled demolition because it was so outside of our frame of reference. We'd never seen anything like this. Uh, so this combined with the shock uh, kept us from being objective. But if you were to plan a fire-induced collapse as a result of airplanes, you'd start the explosions at the point of jet plane impacts. So in World Trade Center 2 and 1, we have all of the key characteristic features of controlled demolitions, but with some of these key differences. We have a beginning of detonation at the point of jet plane impacts, not at the base of the building. In addition, we have not an implosion, but where everything is being exploded outside the footprint. We have squibs, or these mistimed explosions, that occur 20, 40, and even 60 stories down below. And as we already discussed the evidence, for thermite uh, in the molten metal and in the dust in the iron-rich microspheres. So let's take a look, starting with the sudden onset. What is the evidence for this, and how is it produced? Produced by these sounds and flashes from the explosions. Now, the city's fire commissioner, Thomas von Essen, requires all of his EMTs and firefighters to record their experiences, about uh, 500 of them, and in 12,000 pages, uh, as it turns out, collected from 2001 to 2002, the New York State Court of Appeals overturns the city's request to hold on to this information against the lawsuit by the New York Times. They failed, and why was the city holding on to this information? Was it because 118 of these firefighters witnessed sounds and flashes of explosions? We felt the ground shake. You could see the tower sway, and then it just came down. All of a sudden, the ground just started shaking. It shook my bones. Shortly before the first tower came down, I remember feeling the ground shaking. Somewhere around the middle of the World Trade Center, there was this orange and red flash coming out. Initially, just one flash. Then it just kept popping all the way around the building. The building had started to explode. It's like on television. They blow up these buildings. It seemed like it was going all the way around, like a belt. All these explosions. Pop, pop, pop. That's when I heard the building coming down. Saw a brief number of light sources being emitted from inside the building between floors 10 and 15. I saw low-level flashes. We actually heard the pops. You know, you heard the pops of the building. It was blowing out on all four sides. With each popping sound, it was initially an orange, and then a red flash came out of the building. Then it would just go around the building on both sides. So I saw a flash, 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 and then it looked like the building come, came down. I thought the terrorists planted explosives somewhere in the building. That's how loud it was, a crackling explosive. Well, you can hear that explosive in this video. Yeah, here's one of the guys who can tell you I'm okay, all right? Here, hold on. You want to call, oh, yeah. call your mother or something? Does that sound like a fire or collapsing floors? None of these explosions are a part of the official story. Another loud boom at the upper floors, and then there was a series of smaller explosions which appeared to go completely around the building at the upper floors. Before it came down, I saw low-level flashes. Flash, 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 and then it looked like the building came down. Did you see any flashes? I said, yeah. I thought it was just me. He said, no, I saw them too. What did these guys experience? 
started running. Floor by floor, it started popping out. It was like, it was if, if, if they had detonated. Yeah, you know, they were planned yeah. to take down a building. Boom, 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 boom. All the way down. How about the news reporters? What do they say? They tend to tell the truth, as we pointed out earlier, on the first day. And then we don't hear that truth again. What happens to it? Anybody who's ever watched a building being demolished on purpose knows that if you're going to do this, you have to get at the, at the under infrastructure of a building and bring it down. The entire building has just collapsed as if a demolition team set off. When you see the old demolitions of these old buildings, it pulled it down on itself and it is not there anymore. At 10.30, I tried to leave the building, but as soon as I got outside, I heard a second explosion and another rumble and more smoke and more dust. I ran inside the buildings, the chandelier shook, and again, black smoke filled the air. Within another five minutes, we were covered again with more silt and more dust. And then a fire marshal came in and said we had to leave because if there was a third explosion, this building might not last. A huge explosion now raining debris on all of us. We better get out of the way. And all of a sudden, it was this big explosion. I don't know if it's just like what you just seen. That's what we went through before we came out of the building. There was another big, big explosion in the other tower. Now watch this gentleman as he experiences the North Tower collapsing. And ask yourself this question. Is his reaction justified by witnessing what we're told is a gravitational collapse, which happens to be about 1,700 feet away from him? People were just standing around, talking to each other, nodding their heads. You know if it was an explosion or if it was a building collapse. To me, it sounded like it, it, to me it sounded like an explosion, but it was a huge explosion. Chief Albert Turry told me that he was here after the events that took place this morning. He tried to get his men out as quickly as he could, but he said that there was another explosion which took place, and then an hour after there was another explosion in one of the towers here. So according to his theory, he thinks that there were actually devices that were planted in the building. It just went ba-boom, it was like a bomb went off, like, it was like holy hell coming down them stairs. And then when we go, we got, finally got to the bottom, they were coming out on a mezzanine level there, and another explosion came right from it, because they were flying. Like, it sounded like gunfire, you know, bang, 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 and then, and then all of a sudden, three big explosions. I was about five blocks away when I, I heard uh, explosions, three thuds, and turn around to see the building we just got out of, antenna tip over and fall in on itself. We've heard reports of secondary explosions after the aircraft impacted, whether in fact there wasn't something else at the base of the towers that in fact were the coup de grace to bring them to the ground. As we were getting our gear on and making our way to the stairway, there was a uh, heavy duty explosion. Again, none of these explosions are a part of the official story. Now, compare these explosions uh, to a known explosion on, on, the, on the left here. Upward, outward arching streamers, pyroclastic volumes of dust, symmetrical display like a mushroom. Does it look like a gravitational collapse to you? How could explosives be placed in the World Trade Center Twin Towers with 50,000 occupants not knowing about it? Well, this is the floor plan. Let's enlarge it and take a close look. We note that the core structure, the columns of which are immediately adjacent to almost all of the elevators at the lower levels, certainly. If you had access to the elevator hoistway and you could hack through the two layers of three-quarter inch gypsum board protecting the building from a fire rising up through it, you would have access to the core columns and beams and no one would see you. How about an elevator modernization, which we know was going on the nine months prior to 9-11? Yes, Elevator World March 2001 documents it. In fact, they were in the middle of this modernization. Ace Elevator had the contract. We're not conspiracy theorists, but it's pretty obvious that somebody needs to be asked some very key questions. There are people who noted that the elevators were locked in turn and that there were guards placed at these locked elevators during the modernization. Of course, you would have to have access 
to security. Securicom was brought in. Who sits on the board of Securicom? Marvin Bush, the younger brother of George Bush. Let's have somebody ask them some questions. Wireless detonation is common in the industry. You don't need miles of wire, and you can detonate them remotely with great flexibility, in fact. 